Hello, welcome to The Biblical Perspective, an in-depth expositional study in the Word of God. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this presentation of the Biblical Perspective Bible Study. We are so very glad you tune in for this discussion in the Word of God. I'm Pastor Frederick Holmes, and joining me for our discussion this time again is my wife, Minister Gwendolyn Holmes. It's always a pleasure to have you, Minister Gwen. And it's always a pleasure to be here with you and the wonderful people in our viewing audience and the ones who are here. Fantastic. Uh, let's get started. By way of introduction, I have some things that I want to say. We're starting a new teaching series called The Blessings of Life that God put on our heart. And you'll see why we're teaching this as we explain it in our introductory points. The purpose of this teaching and others to follow that's entitled The Believer's Blessings is about the wonderful things that God has done for us. And the design is to get our focus off all the stuff going on and focus on God and be encouraged and lifted. We're bombarded daily with bad news, and you know that's the case. No matter what outlet you tune to, you get bad news, pr bad news in print, bad news on the radio, bad news on the television, a lot of very bad news about the conditioning happenings in the world today. This can weigh on us. This can cause us to forget just how blessed we are yeah. and to forget that we're in the hands of a loving God and a trustworthy God. As we embark on these studies, let us look at the definition of blessing. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary says that a blessing is a thing that is conducive to happiness or welfare. The Greek word study or rather, the Greek word used for blessed is makarios. And it means the result of God extending his benefits. The definition of blessed goes on to say that it's the advantages God confers. It goes on to say something that places a believer in an enviable position a fortunate position because of receiving God's provision. And the last part of the definition of blessed says God's grace benefits. Having those is what it means to be blessed. Our topic this time for Minister Gwen and I is the blessing of life. The life force in each of us and the very life that we're able to live day by day, they are gifts and blessings from God. Every day is a grace gift from God above, who made us and who sustains us. We could not live one single day without God. Minister Gwen, would you begin our presentation this evening? Yes. Our presentation this evening will begin with the start of human life. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and then populated them with lights, mm. fish, yes. fowl, vegetation, animals, various creatures, mankind, and then sent water to moisturize the earth. Mm. God then planted a garden called Eden, which was a literal, physical paradise. Paradise, yes. And placed the man and woman he had made in it. He gave them the authority to rule the earth and everything in it. Yes. We'll notice that he said for them to have dominion. Dominion means rulership. And it means to have rulership or authority yes. over. Yes, yes. 
The following verses give an account of the creation of the man Adam and the woman Eve and of God giving them this rulership over his creation. Yes. We are reading in the Bible from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 29. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Yes. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Yes. Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding seed. It shall be food for you. Wow. Now the following verses gives the details of the creation of the man and the action of God giving the man life. Wow. In Genesis 2, 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the bread of life, mm -hmm. and man became a living being. Yes. The following verse gives the details of the creation of the woman as God made her from a part of the man. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 2, verses 20 through 23. The man gave names to all the cattle and to birds of the sky and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. Hmm. So the Lord <coughs> God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. The Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. And the man said. The man said. What? That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and we like to have a little joke about that, Mr. Gwen. We, we say, Adam looked at Eve and said, whoa, man. Yes. And that's where woman. a woman came from. But that's not biblical. That's, that's just something we say. That's just a, <laughs> a joke my husband made, and it's really nice. Yes, though. it's a nice joke. It's a very you know, nice joke. Adam was compliment. excited is the point. Yes. And we still should be excited about our wives. Amen. 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 And I am, Ms. Mr. Gwen. A little, you are, a little frightened on camera. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I score whenever I can <laughs> at this point in my life. <laughs> okay. All right. So, 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 so you, did you want to elaborate on anything that you said about the creation of man and, and what God did in giving him life? Well, it's just a wonderful reminder hmm. that God is our creator. Mm. wholeheartedly 100 percent mm. he loved us from the beginning yes. and he gave us life fruitful life fruitful and life. everything that we needed for that life wow. in that garden yes including bringing the woman to the man which the man had nothing to do with creating her god and said the scripture said he slept and you know i mean just to go in i would just want to say this pro marriage uh, a woman completes the man. Yes. She's that side of him that God knew that he needed. Yes. There was nothing else out there that was complementary to Adam. Yes. God designed the woman. Yes. Actually, in one version of scripture, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 he fashioned the woman, I believe it says in one version. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 that is just a beautiful thing. You know, somebody made this uh, comment a few years ago to me. Well, you know, he just made the man. <laughs> he but made he the man. But he woman. fashioned the woman. And to that we say, amen. 
<laughs> Amen. Amen. So, well, I, I had a message one time, and it was called, Why We, Meaning Women, uh -huh. Wear the Designer's Label. Oh. Because he fashioned us well. to do so. Amen. That's, that's a little pro shopping uh, uh, infomercial, but I think. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, but no, I think no. that you snuck a pro shopping no, information no, in there. That's a word reading uh -huh. information. Okay, yeah, yeah. The right. designers, the God designers <laughs> label. Okay, God designed the woman. I'm, let's, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But All anyway. right. So, so the, the beautiful thing about this, the Bible clearly states God is the source of life. Clearly. God is the source of life. Yes. He gave man spirit. Yes. Man became a living spirit, a living he soul, in a changeable turn. Only after God breathed, breathed his life into the man. I do not for one minute believe we were a tadpole that climbed up out of a lagoon and grew legs and eventually lost our tail and became a monkey and all this nonsense of evolution that is straight from the pit of hell. I believe the Bible. I, believe I have Bible. found nothing that I believe in as much as I do the Bible, although we've read many great books. Yes. But the more science discovers, a lot of times the more they validate the Bible. The more they validate the Bible. You know, somebody caused all of this. Yes. And that person was God. I yes. believe the Genesis record. So uh, just a little plug for, well, for, for creationism. Yes. Well, it's we, a little plug, a little plug. You can't say it too much. To plug, right. The we devil's to peddling lies. We are hammering the truth. <laughs> All right. Yes. Now, Mr. Gwen, that was a great, a great foundation you laid there, the start of human life. Now, let's advance man a little. Let's talk about the shaping of human life. Yes. Now, I, I find this intriguing, and I enjoyed uh, putting this lesson together. Listen to what God gave me to write here. God knew each human being. Before the spermatozoa from their father reached the ovum of their mother. Yes. Is that clear? Yes. <laughs> You're waxing scientific there. He calls the fertilization of the ovum creating life. Yes. So that's where life begins. And the ovum divided several times to create an embryo that will grow into a baby. Who can pull that off but a god? Our God, the true God. Who can pull that off but the true and living, life-giving God? Yes. I'm excited. I'm sorry. Let me read on. Then, in addition to creating the baby, God fashioned each one of us into the person he wanted us to be. Mm -hmm. That is why no one should be unhappy about who they are and how they are, about their height, about their body type, about their weight. Now, look, God made you who he wanted you to be. Yes, yes. And he fashioned you. Yes. And blessed you. How can you dare question what God did? Yes. You know, I mean, I, I, it bothers me to see people with low self-esteem because of who they are. Or I'm not as tall as him. I don't have her looks. I don't have her hair. I don't have this. I don't have whatever material things. God knows what he's doing with all of us, and he guides our life if we trust him. Yes, Pastor, and unfortunately, some of those messages were delivered yes. to our mental mailboxes. Yes, when very well phrased. When we were young. Very well phrased. When we very were well still phrased. forming um, ideas, Yes, we were still... Uh, you know, information of what our world was going to be like yes, and the world view. And um, sometimes the people didn't, you know, they didn't do us a good service. Yes. And, and you know, that's why parent and grandparent, aunts and uncles, everybody mm -hmm. who loves children should be very careful to guard the minds of the children and guard the exposures of the children. And you should make them so positive at home until when they go to school or go wherever they go, the world can't corrupt them and confuse them. Right. You know, right. you should tell them who they are and how wonderful they are and that how much you love them and how much God loves them. Yes. Because yes. the world will corrupt their thinking. So yes. thank you for that input. Mm -hmm. God, but he fashioned each one of us into the person that he wanted us to be. He caused each of us to grow and develop in our mother's womb. You think about that until it was time for our entry into the world 
through a live birth. Yeah. Amen for live birth. Amen. Because some children are born, uh, they're stillborn. Mm -hmm. And he let us get here alive. I do not understand the mystery of life in the womb. I do not understand it. I've not studied it enough. All I know is a miracle God did. Yes, yes. And he, he just lets it happen, and that baby grows in that womb. That baby gets all the nourishment, the oxygen, and everything that baby needs until everything. it's time for that baby to come out. And uh, then I like this next part. He then caused us, when we were born, to take our first breath as a living human being. Yes. Oh, yes. that's miraculous to me. Mm -hmm. And after that, he oversees us all the days of my life. And wow. can we just say amen? Amen. <laughs> yes, for overseeing. Wow. Psalms 119, 73, that longest uh, uh, chapter division in the Bible, this long song, 172 verses. David said in Psalms 119, 73a, your hands made me mm -hmm. and fashioned me. Right. And you know, that's to give us a vivid uh, illustration yes. of God because, I mean, we don't know what God's hands look right, like, right. Uh, you know, but we have to have some way to describe yes. what God does, yes. and, and God is okay with this. Yes, it's he, called, he, may I just, for those who might not know minister, yes. uh, it's, when you use, speak of God as if he has bodily body parts, parts, that's yes. called anthro homorphically speaking, anthropos, right. man, speaking mm -hmm. of God as if he has manly parts. So right. when we say the hand of God, mm -hmm. that's an anthropomorphism. Yes, right. So that, that's just for those who might not have heard that or be aware of it. And it's, like you said, perfectly okay because the Bible uses those terms. Yes. The does. eyes of the Lord is upon you, the hands of the Lord. So we can have a way to relate, as you very well explained. Thank yes. you. Yes, and, and God himself gives us those, that freedom. He uses that language. Absolutely. Okay. Minister. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. Psalms 119.39 goes on to talk about God uh, and his role in our lives. 139.13. 139 verses 13 through 16 mm -hmm. says, you formed my inward parts. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yes. You wove me in my mother's womb. Another wow. That is a wow. <laughs> I will give thanks to you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm. Again, I have to say wow. Mm -hmm. Human body is a masterpiece. Amazing, yes. Wow. Amazing how it all works together. Wonderful are your works. And my soul knows it very well, the psalmist writes. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And your book were written all, uh, I'm sorry, and in your book, now this is amazing, and in your book, the writer says, were written all the days that were ordained for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to live those days out because he wants me to. That's right. And so that's why, whether it's a pandemic or an epidemic or a plague or whatever it is, we are not going to live in fear because our God has us. Yes. We're going to be cautious but not fearful. Yes. All right. Look at this. Let me start over. And in your book were written all the days that were ordained for me when I, when as yet, there was not one of them. Yes. Before we got here and started our first day, yes. he planned out all of our days. All of the days. That should let you know you're in his hands. Yes. Absolutely. That's incredible. I, I get excited about this. Uh, minister, jump in if you want to say something here. Yeah. All right. Each person has a destiny mm. that God wants them to fulfill. And that's something else we should tell our children. Wow. Mm -hmm. Find your destiny. Yes. And that includes knowing God, serving God, and obeying God. Yes. Our destiny should include that. As was the case with Jeremiah, Isaiah, and the Apostle Paul, some people were chosen and called to special service for God even before they were born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible idea. That's an incredible idea. 
Isaiah 49, 1 supports what we just said. Yes. Listen to me, O islands, and pay attention, you people from afar. Mm. The Lord called me from my mother's womb, Isaiah writes. <laughs> from the body of my mother, he wow. named me. I mean, the, 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 the scripture here is so powerful, it's hard for me just to read through it. I want to just emphasize how significant this is for people to understand about the shaping of their life and their, and their, and their existence by God. Yes. Jeremiah said, before I was formed in the womb, you knew me. Before I was formed, <laughs> you knew me. Before. Jeremiah 1.5. Yes. And before you were born, God speaking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. He says, before I formed you in the womb, clarifying, I knew you. God saying to the boy as a child when he's called him to preach, look, I knew you before I called you, before you were formed in your mother's womb. Right. And he says, God goes on to tell Jeremiah, as he's calling in the ministry, young, and before you were born, I consecrated you. Whoa. Wow. I, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. This is mind-boggling to me. Yeah. And you know what, Minister Gwen, each of us should see God's hand on our destiny. Yes. We can look at our lives and see some shaping God did and some guiding God did. Well, when Still. You, when you <laughs> read the word of God and consider what it says and meditate upon it, yes, if you were reading yes. these passages in the Genesis passage, then you would be concerned. Yes. I would think that you would be concerned about your destiny. Yes. And is it lining up? Wow with what God wants for your life. Because sometimes it seems that many Christians are not looking for what their destiny is and no. what God has called yes. them to. Yes. And, and they're not thinking about the fact that God knew you and every avenue yeah. that you would take, every street that you would walk yes. down, yes. every puddle that you would fall in or jump yes. over. Yes. Before you were born. He already saw it. Be, be, he already saw it. And he called Jeremiah As and child. Isaiah before they were a child. <laughs> he yes. consecrated him, yes. it says, and before you were born. Wow. Wow. Before you were, were the baby, when you were uh -huh. the embryo uh -huh. stage, yeah. or before that, I consecrated you and I knew you. That's, that's being intimate. That's an intimate knowing. That's mm. not just knowing of you. Speak, Gwen. Speak. Not this knowing Teach. about you. Teach. No, I know you in the sense that I know everything about you because I formed you. And I formed you for a plan. I fashioned yes. you for a person. Purpose. purpose. Yes. yes. So yes. that's why I know everything about you. I know your weak areas, but God, I can't go here. I'm like a child. Moses said, I can't speak well. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. You got Aaron. Don't yeah, worry yeah, yeah, about that. I got you covered. I got you covered. <laughs> but it's a discovery for us. That's it's good. no That's good. discovery for God. Come on. That's good teaching. That's some good teaching. I'm so, I just should let you go ahead. Oh, <laughs> no. and, and this next one, Pastor, yes. when you get to Galatians, yes. I, I'm trying to sound the trumpet or hit the gong or whatever it is you have to do, blow the horn. Because many, 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 many people have read Galatians and never saw, they never see it's gone. what Paul said. This is the persecutor of the church. Wait a minute. Who is this? But yet, wait, he wait. said God knew him. Even when he was persecuting the church, God already had plans for him. God already had plans for him to preach to the Gentiles as well as kings you know, and the Jews. Minister Gwen. Sometimes people don't love God a lot because they weren't forgiven for a lot. Mm, okay. if, I, I don't know. They I can't say this is real. Mm -hmm. But God allowed Paul mm -hmm. to get this great education, mm -hmm. this, have this great family, yes. this great culture, enculturation, and uh, this learned man, a Pharisee of Pharisees, right. rumored that he was on the Sanhedrin Council, some historians say. Yes. Okay? And knew the law. Yes. So much until he said, this church is wrong. This is not what Moses said. Mm -hmm. And believed there was a cult that should be stamped out, going around locking up Christians. When he got saved. Yes. Mm, help me, Holy Ghost. When he got saved, he was so glad. 
I think he might have been shocked that God even saved him. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> he said, I don't even qualify to be called an apostle. Mm -hmm. I'm the least of the apostles because I persecuted the church. So here's a man that didn't even value his own life as much as he valued the gospel. Yeah. And that was because God forgave him for being such a bad person before he got saved. So he wasn't neutral, like oh, some people. Teach, go ahead. Come on. I mean, in, I don't. I in don't, society, I mean, some I mean, people I, would just say, "Well, you do your thing, I do mine. You want to be a Christian? No. That's fine. I just leave you alone, and I go over here and no. do what I want to do and be what I want to be." No. Not Paul. No. The Apostle Paul. Yeah. He was against the church and said, "Lock up those Christians yes. and and harm those Christians, and yes. if they." get judged that they're guilty, they should die. Right. Men, women, and children. Wait. He was not old enough to throw stones on Stephen. Right. To participate in capital punishment, you had to reach a certain age. Yes. He said, well, I can't help you all kill him, but let me hold your coat. Yeah, let it, me just participate Acts somehow. chapter seven or eight, I believe it's chapter seven, when mm -hmm. they're stoning Stephen, mm -hmm. there was a young man there named Saul, that's before his name was changed, mm -hmm. holding the coats of the those killing the persecutors Stephen. yes yes the murderers now, all of that they, that's, they murdered him all of that came back to him and he thought he was right once he got saved god had forgiven him so for sorry. so much yeah. he was so sorry he was so repentant till he spent his very life he's in prison saying i don't care if i don't get out if i go to the guillotine if they cut my head off i don't care what i've got to go you're going to be bound when you go to Jerusalem, the prophet said. I'm not only ready to be bound, I'm ready to die. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, this man, Paul. For Christ I live, live for, for Christ, Christ I, I die, die, he said. So, so in life or death. In life or death. But you know. I'm Christ. So many of us don't have the conviction. You said we haven't done enough to be forgiven. We don't enough. feel like we we've don't been feel forgiven like for a lot. For a lot. Uh, but we but have. You have to be, <laughs> but you have to be sorry about your sin. Wow. He was sorry. And grateful for your salvation. And grateful for the salvation that God wow. has provided. Wow. But that's the new birth. That's okay. An, that's another uh, we, life. Uh, <laughs> whoa. We didn't even get to Paul. We, we got Isaiah and Jeremiah. But listen. Listen. Did, did we, you, you want me to read this one or you want to read Paul? No, you can read it. <laughs> I know you love this. No, I, 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 you read it. Okay. Galatians 1, 15 and 16a. Paul says to the Galatians church, but when God, who had set me apart, even from my mother's womb, mm -hmm. and called me through his grace. Sure wasn't any merit. Wow. Was pleased Please. to reveal his son in me mm. so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's more than amazing, Minister Gwen. <laughs> God set us apart. Yes. In our mother's womb. Yes. And yes. knew that we would be here today yes. talking about him setting people yes. apart in their yes. mother's womb. I, no I, matter what your journey. I, I have an advantage on some people, I believe, but maybe not on a lot of people. Uh, I always knew I'd be here. Mm -hmm. I was told this as a child. It was prophesied. I ran from the preacher who told me. He came to the house to eat. I said, I don't see him. I'm not going to get that pulpit and do what he does. You know how the Baptist preachers preach mm -hmm. it. I was scared of that. I'm not, I don't want to do that. And uh, my mother told me, she said, God told me when you were a toddler, you were going to do this. So I laid uh, uh, on my resting place today and just thanked God yes. for him allowing me to do this. I've written two sermons, I mean, two, book, two lessons and, two, and a sermon this week, and I'm not tired yet. Beautiful. I'm glad to be here. Yes. And I know that this is exactly what I was put on the planet to do. And that's yes. why I've got to be uh, uh, theologically sound. Yes. We have to have, as my uh, friend here, uh, 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 our men's leader says, an orthodox ministry. Yes. Orthodox Christianity is what I must teach because that's the only one that's right. Yes. Orthodox. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting too excited. Uh, time's moving on, but praise God uh, for, for, for a little over time, maybe. <laughs> that's very All right. So, Minister Gwen, uh, uh, that's the shaping of life. Yes. Even in yes. the womb. You have the last section of our lesson, the sustaining of life. What do you want to tell us, Minister? You know, God gives each human being 
the breath of life. You yes. mentioned that earlier. Yes. Yes. And he makes them, he mm. makes us yes. a living spirit. Now that's every human being. Everybody. That's not just Christians. No. He makes everyone a living spirit yes. in his image. He made man yes. in his image. Yes. And he blesses them to enjoy the earth that he made. Yes. <laughs> we can't say that loud enough <laughs> yes. to people. Yes. Thus, in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5, it says, Thus says God, mm -hmm. the Lord, yes. who created the yes. heavens and stretched them out, mm. who spread out the earth and its offspring, yes. who gives breath to the people on it, mm. Mm. and spirit to those who walk in it. In it. Breath and spirit. So everyone has the ability to accept and to hear the voice of their God. Hallelujah. And make his son their savior. Amen. Everyone has that ability because God created them with that ability. They have that ability. So they can either accept it, you can either accept it or reject it. We recommend accepting. Amen. That God wow. who made you. The patriarch Job gave a detailed description of his understanding of how God caused him to be and then provided for his life and watched over his spirit. In Job 10:10 10, 10 through 12, it says, Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? Mm. Clothe me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews? Wow. You gave me life and showed me kindness and in your providence watched over my spirit. Wow. That's an amazing knowledge to have as you go through life. That's very comforting. And for Job to say that after all yes. that he was going through. Yes. He was in the middle of the problem. Yes. But said you're watching over my spirit. But he never blamed God. He never, never. forgot his maker. And that's a message for us today. That's the emphasis. That no matter what we have to go through, don't count God foolish for allowing us to go through it. Yes. He, our lives are guided by him, and he has a purpose and a plan. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Well, uh, Minister Gwen, I, I think we'll wrap this up. It's okay. been beautiful. Okay. In the in summation, let me say this. Each person is born. When they, each person is born, they have a limited number of days to live on this earth before going into eternity. So as our life is a precious gift from God, we should guard it carefully and live wisely in space and time. Yes, yes. Job uh, 14.5 says, a person's days are determined. Mm -hmm. There that is again. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. No need of looking for the fountain of youth. You're not going to live any longer than God wants you to live. <laughs> Period. That's a foolish fool's errand. Right. Amen. Let's praise him while we're here yes. and serve him. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16a says, Therefore, be careful how you walk. That means lifestyle. Not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time. Yes. Each of us, each of us should endeavor to find our purpose in life. And unless you know God, trust me, you might have found a part of it, but you haven't found all of it because he purposed for all of us to find him. Mm -hmm. And that's why he provided his son, which will be in the, in the next lesson next week. Yes. <laughs> all right? Yes. All right. Each of us should endeavor to find our purpose, what God wants us to do in our lifetime. That will cause us to have a rich and fulfilled life and will cause us to make the contribution to the world that God wants us to. Final word, Minister? Amen. I think that we should spend our time making good use of our time, including what God's purpose is for us. Yes. And sometimes that sounds like a vast mystery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, God's purpose for me. 
I say and I recommend, if you don't know what your purpose is in serving God or what he has for you, you know, start serving with what is nearest to you. Yes. What you are near. Yes. If you are near service that is needed, serve. God will allow you to get blessed from that, and he, from there, will be able to usher you into and guide you into yes. your purpose. Yes. The one he created you for. Yes. Thank you for joining us. We want to thank you for joining us for the beginning of our lessons on the blessings of the believer. believer. And as we focus on what God has given us and what he's done for us, please join us next time. Emmanuel Community Church is located at 12607 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You can find all of our messages on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click subscribe and thanks for watching. Be blessed for God is with us.